HTML provides dozens of elements to build web pages. These elements can be broadly categorized into two types, semantic and non-semantic elements. While non-semantic elements like div and span do not provide meaningful information about their content, semantic elements clearly define the role and structure of their content, making it easier for both developers and browsers to understand the context of the information. For example, here all the content is wrapped inside div elements. While it visually displays the content, nothing in the code tells us whether this is a header, a main section, or some other important part of the page. However, here, we use the main element to indicate that this is the main content of the page. The section groups related content, and the article tag is used to define each individual article. Using semantic elements in HTML offers several benefits. First, as semantic elements provide meaningful information about the structure and content of a web page, they make it easier for assistive technologies, like screen readers, to interpret and present the content to users with disabilities. Secondly, search engines prioritize semantic elements when indexing content. Using semantic HTML can help improve search engine rankings as it allows search engines to better understand the context and relevance of the content. Lastly, semantic elements improve the readability of the code for developers. They clearly define the structure of the page, making it easier to navigate and maintain. So what are the most widely used semantic elements in HTML? The first element is the header. A header element typically displays introductory content found at the top of a page or within other semantic elements. A header often contains headings, logos, and navigation. The second semantic element is the nav. A nav element represents the section containing navigation links to the main areas of the website. These links help guide visitors to the primary sections or blocks of the site. The third element is the section. The section element is useful for grouping related content together, such as text, images, videos, and other media that share a common theme or topic. A section element can be used to divide larger elements like articles or main content into smaller, distinct sections, or to add structure to navigation, multimedia, or grouped information. Another element is the main. The main element is used to identify the primary and most essential content of a web page. This element should be unique and only appear once per page. The content inside the main element should be directly related to the purpose of the page and should not include elements that are common across all pages, such as navigation links, site logos, footer information, and so on. Another element is the article. The article is used to define a self-contained piece of content that could be independently distributed or reused. It typically represents a complete or self-sufficient composition, such as a blog post, news article, forum post, or any other independent piece of content. Let's move on to the aside element. The aside is used to represent content that is slightly related to the main content of the page or section. This can include sidebars, pull quotes, related links, or other supplementary information that enhances the main content but is not essential to its understanding. The last element is the footer. The footer element represents the footer of a page or section, typically containing copyright info, links, or contact details. After exploring popular semantic elements in HTML, let's combine them. This HTML document demonstrates the use of semantic elements to structure content in a meaningful and accessible way. Here, the header element serves as the introductory section of both the page and individual articles, clearly identifying the blog's title and navigation links at the top of the page, while also grouping the article titles and meta information for each post. The main element encapsulates the primary content of the page, which includes a section that holds multiple article elements. Each article uses its own header to define the title and publication details, separating content into distinct parts. The footer element appears twice as well once to conclude the main content section with additional information like a subscription link, and another at the bottom of the page for site-wide details like copyright and privacy policy links. Lastly, the aside houses a list of related articles, providing additional resources for readers who may want to explore topics related to the blog posts. Thanks for watching.